journey walk around the landscape. But this, um, I did some research after I played the game, and it is based on the island of St. Kilda. Um, the, the layout is nothing like it. So I thought, why don't I find people who are mapping the island and see if I can um, get any data off them. Um, and that was historical Scotland. They have already laser scanned the whole island using LADAR, photogrammetry, um, terrestrial laser scanning. Um, but unfortunately, they want to do their own thing, so they weren't interested in collaborating with me. So all I had available was this publicly um, available um, image that they have in the top left on their website, which they've left some height information in there, which was um, very fortunate because I was able to turn it into grayscale, um, and then I turned it into a terrain model. And then I was able to import this terrain model into a game engine called Unity. And as you can see here, I've been using um, a pack called Gaia, which allows you to do procedural um, texturing and procedural placement of objects based upon different parameters, um, uh, location on the map, and, and height, and stuff like that. So I ended up with something that looks like this. This is my intro, uh, the, the layer behind my intro screen. Um, uh, when you play the game um, through the other room, you'll see some flocks of birds flying around um, to add a little bit of authenticity because um, the island is just ram packed full of um, seabirds. Um, there's a 3D uh, video available at one of the cliffs and basically there are birds zooming overhead and coming in an app shot. It's brilliant. Um, so I'll talk about some of the technology I used. Because I don't have uh, access to the primary data, um, they have a lot of interesting architectural styles on the island. So the occupation of the island ranged from um, Bronze Age, I think, up until contemporary times, and more or less continuous occupation. I think the last lot of people were introduced um, in the 18th century or something like that, and they survived until um, the early 20th century when they were evacuated, when there was only a few, maybe 35 people left. Um, so this is a plasticine model of what's called a cleat, which is kind of like a dry stone storage building that they, they used, their St. Kilda used to use to store, um, uh, well, their seabirds in after they've caught them. Um, and so I made a plasticine um, version of it, and then I used a automated turntable and used photogrammetry to take um, a series of pictures. And this, this software here is, um, this is Agisoft, I think, but I actually use something called Visual SFM, which is it's kind of like that, but it's free. Um, if you can compile software, then I recommend using that. Um, um, the resultant reconstruction is this point cloud here, which I needed to clean up. Um, and then I used Blender. I imported it into Blender, and I created a low polygon model, and then laid it over the high polygon model. And I was able to normal map to the um, model so that when it was in, and then render it using the cycles rendering, so procedural stone. Um, I'm learning how to join the nodes in order to create different textures. So that is just, that's modeled from maths, making little cracks and stuff like that, but it still doesn't look right. But this is what it looks like in game. So because it's low poly, it means that I can put lots of these things in the landscape without um, affecting performance. So because the whole aim is to get this available on the web browser so that people can um, walk around um, and explore remote places um, from the comfort of their living room. Now here's a, something else I did. Um, there's a number of islands and stacks surrounding the um, St. Kilda, and because there's no height data publicly available, the correct resolution for me, I created uh, sculptures again. But instead of, um, because they're weird shapes, you can't translate those to height maps, because you've got like um, undercuts and things like that. So um, I use photogrammetry to create the model of the sea stack, and then I create a point cloud and import it in. Or if I want a terrain model, I create an orthogonal camera in Blender and then create, use that to render depth. And it creates a height map that I can then use to create a normal terrain in the game engine. And as you can see, that's the island of Soe, um, which I've added on, um, which links to the story of the game. So I decided um, there was um, a crash that occurred during the Second World War. It was a, a Wellington bomber crashed into the island and uh, it was only in the 70s that they discovered this wreck. Um, and it's one of two planes. And they found this uh, Canadian um, RAF 
badge for uh, a hat, and that's part of the fabric of the Wellington bomber. Um, and there's a there's a, a skeleton on the island as well, the um, skeleton of the of the, the aeroplane. And as you can see, there's my version of it, which looks nothing like it, but it's an uh, artist um, li artistic license. Um, so the whole story is you start off as um, one of the people on the plane who has survived. You wash up on the main island and you have to find out, you have to survive and find out what happened to your crew and plane and stuff. And um, the whole idea is mainly to make it a, a, a more interactive um, contained environment. Um, there are numbers of different mysterious things on the on the island inspired by popular culture so here's a lost reference for fans of that um, you get close to the hatch you can hear music coming out of it um, adds a layer of mystery to it and each of the objects has a a poem um, relating to um, what the what the object is so for here this is the refuge because it's a shelter of some kind um, Future plans, I'm going to add more stacks. So this is um, more islands. This is the Isle of Borier. Um, that's got interesting story in its own. It's got like a few cleats on it from people who got isolated there because they had smallpox. So I want to maybe tell that story on there. Um, I want to put a bit of, nothing to do with St. Kilda, but I'm a fan of um, the Second World War code breaking. So I was thinking of maybe incorporating some kind of Second World War code breaking puzzles in the island because there's a mysterious signal that you can hear and you've got to, if, if you can actually write down the Morse code yourself, you'll be able to take it through a code breaking process and find out what, what, what that message is. Um, so where to now? I'm going to be doing tweaks as I learn more about the, the graphics. Because one of the things that, that happens in archaeo gaming as a field is archaeologists produce really good teaching tools, but they're not necessarily really good with the visuals. So I'm going to collaborate with people who are more savvy with the visuals to create a, a um, something which is more marketable and um, something that you could put on Steam um, have other people play. Um, I'm going to get involved with some of the ancestors of the people who survived the island because some happen to just live next door to me. Um, it's random. Um, and they go, to, they, used to, they go to my church as well so that was, that was funny. Um, but they were really interested when they found out I was doing something that their grandparents were um, involved with. Um, I'm going to release it for alpha and beta testing to get more feedback and suggestions on tweaking it, tightening it up, people in the field, get their points of view. I'm really open to that because um, I'm tired of working alone because it's very exhausting. Um, and quite often you get into a, a tunnel and you can't, you can't see obvious things that need pointing out to you. Um, so then I'm going to try and put it on Kickstarter or Steam to try and raise some money because I don't expect everyone who collaborates to give their time away for free. And I would actually like to pay people and myself to do this. And so, thank you. Uh, if you want to find me.